Hey, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Cornthal. Um, welcome to another week of language arts. And I don't know if you noticed, but we're getting to the very last bits of our language arts book. Can you believe um, how far we've come this year and all the things that you've learned? So um, with that, some of this is kind of um, going to be review, but let's work through it together. Now, those of you like Zane, who... Um, if they know it, they, they do it and then just double check after they're done. Um, you can do that on different sections. You can do that. Uh, sometimes I will tell you to do that. Sometimes I tell you not to do that. So right now, um, I'm going to give you a choice. You can actually do this whole page by yourself and then come check with me for the answers. Or as a review, um, we can work through it together. But just like working out, watching an exercise video, if you watch it from the couch and don't give it up, give up, get up, um, you're not going to get stronger. You have to actually get up and do the work. So let your brain be doing some of this work here as we go. Okay. So we're on page 187, 187. I'm going to write it here on the top. 180. Oops. Sorry. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> 187, uh, in our books. So make sure you're there. Okay. Here we go. Um, complete each sentence where it's think a at the top of the page, complete each sentence by writing the correct adjective. What is an adjective? It describes a what noun. Okay. So an adjective describes a noun. This is the warm day we've had all spring. It is the remember all spring when you compare to more than one, Warmer would be if you compared like yesterday to today, but warmest, warmest, warmest day we've had all spring because it's comparing more than two. Okay. I have, I have few pages in my book than you have in yours. So you're comparing to one friend. So if you compare two things, it's fewer. If you're comparing only two, it's fewer. Now, if it was compared to the whole class, it would be, oops, sorry. I was thinking fewest because I was saying if you compare to the whole class, um, it would be fewer. Ah, boys and girls. My goodness. Um, forgive me. Whew. <laughs> you might have to double check my work on this. Uh, my brain is just, or my mouth is not matching what my brain is thinking. Okay. So if you have just two, it's fewer. Now, if you were comparing to all your friends in class, it would be fewest. So as I was thinking that I wrote fewest by accident. Okay. So this is just you and your friend. So that's two fewer. It would be fewer. Okay. Daniel is much tall than he was in the beginning of the school year. So he is comparing himself to just one other person, which is himself earlier in the year. So he's not the tallest. He's just taller than he was earlier. Taller. Okay. Owen's book is longer or longest than David's book. Okay. So it's just Owen's book and David's book. So just two, remember? So if it's just two things, it's longer. The comparison is longer. Okay, Abby is the something runner in her class. Ooh, that's more than one. That's out of her whole class. She is the fast, what? Fastest. Good job. Okay, Madeline thinks grape jelly is good, gooder <laughs> than strawberry jelly. Oh, if you wrote good or gooder, that's not it. This is one of those tricky ones in the English language that switches. So I think grape jelly or Madeline thinks grape jelly is better, better than strawberry jelly. Good becomes it's good, better, best. Remember? So good is one of those tricky ones that if it's good by itself, if you compare with two, it's better than that one. And if you're comparing it with like out of any other sandwich on the planet, it would be best. Good, better, best. Good, better, best. That is a good reminder. So hopefully you remember that better and you're the best at it. Okay, here we go. Number seven, Connor moaned. This is the bad cold I have had all year. Ooh, is it bad, bad, or baddest? Is it bad, bad, or baddest? Is it bad, bad, or baddest? baddest. No, that's another one of those tricky ones. I'm going to switch it. It is bad. 
worse, worse if it's one, I'm going to write it over here, worse or worst. So it's bad, worse, worst. How would I use worse? Um, I think I hurt myself worse than you when I fell down. Now, I could say I hurt myself worst in the whole class. Okay, or I had the worst score in the whole class. Uh, worst is when you compare three or more. Okay, more than two. And worse is if you compare two things. Okay, so this is one of those other tricky ones. It is not bad, bad, or baddest. Okay, it's bad, worse, worse, and worst. Okay, do you see it? Okay, even with all my scribbles. Here we go. Not that. Mark each sentence. Circle the adjective. Don't forget to mark up your direction so you don't forget any parts. And draw a small arrow. So mark each sentence. That's what we do. We label um, the sentence itself, remember. And then draw a small arrow from the adjective to the subject it describes. Then diagram the subject, verb, and adjective. Okay, so let's do all the steps right here. So let's diagram the sentence. The first thing we do, remember the very back to the beginning, Mr. Morton and what he does. So who is a subject or who or what is a subject in the sentence and what do they do? The dark cloud moved in from in front of the sun. So who's doing the action? The dark cloud. What did the dark cloud do? Moved in front of the sun. Okay, so what else do we need to mark? Do you remember? Let's go with the basics. What is the noun? What's doing the action in that sentence? The cloud. There's the subject. There, where is, what are they doing? They moved, that's the verb. Okay, now let's find some adjectives to describe the sun. How, I'm sorry, not the sun, forgive me. The dark, the, the cloud. Wow, boys and girls, please double check my work. Um, the dark cloud. Okay, there's dark. And I even said the, it's not the, it's a. Okay, dark cloud. So it is dark and it is a cloud. Remember, it's not this cloud, that cloud. This is one of the ones that most people forget. A, the, um, that, that dark cloud. Which dark cloud? That dark cloud. A dark cloud. So a dark cloud. Not all dark clouds, just a dark cloud. Uh, so that is also an adjective. Those are both the adjectives that describe cloud. Okay, now we get to diagram the sentence. I love this part and it reminds me, if I had forgotten the word a, uh, this would tell me right here. So I would put cloud. Cloud is our subject, the noun. And what did it do? It moved. And then if I had, I would have written dark. And if I had forgotten, I would say, what's that other line there for? Oh, yeah, A, A dark cloud. Oh, yes. Now, boys and girls, if you are taking a quiz on Google Classroom, it doesn't have this paper to mark it all up. If you need to, make your own sentence diagram. Like, draw it on the side of the paper because uh, it will actually help you. If you think you need to diagram the sentence, then you won't miss any of those things. Okay, the bottom of the page. Uh, a gentle rain is falling outside. A gentle rain is falling outside. What's falling outside? The rain. The rain. Ooh, what about is falling? Is falling. That is a verb phrase. Remember that? Is is helping the word falling. It is falling. The rain is falling. So that is the whole verb phrase. And then, you know what? Let's do something a little different. Let's diagram this part and see if the sentence diagram can help us. So what do we know is falling? The rain, that's a subject. And what's it doing? Is falling. And this tells me, see this line here, boys and girls? There's two lines. So I know that we're looking for two adjectives. And I see gentle, and I probably would have remembered that. Oh, the rain is gentle. But there's another line. Oh, yeah. A gentle rain. There's the A. And then I put it on that line. Okay. That's why I love the diagrams because it reminds me. Oh, I forgot one. A is also an adjective that tells me about the rain. Okay. Perfect. So if you're done for the day, see you later. Hey there, boys and girls. We are on a new page. 
Um, I hope you're doing well. We're getting even closer to the end of the book and we're reviewing all our pronouns. Pronouns take the place of a what? Takes the place of a noun. So we are on page 188. And hopefully you clicked on YouTube and you clicked the little button. You went right to it so you didn't have to look for it. Um, so in the description, don't forget, you can actually click on the button and it will take you to the time at the start of each page. Okay, so what does this page tell us to do? Let's read the instructions. It says circle each pronoun. Pronoun, um, they take the place of a noun. Then it says underline the noun that the pronoun takes place of. So which pronoun are they talking about? If I say he, am I talking about he Cooper or am I talking about he Sam? Or am I talking about he Isaac, right? Um, so what is the pronoun? What noun is it talking about? Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then it says draw an arrow from each pronoun to the noun it stands for. So I marked up my instructions. Hopefully you did that with yours too. So let's look at the first one. Our cat has five kittens. They are so cute. Ooh, I see it. They. There's my first pronoun, they. And who's the they? Our cat had five kittens. They are so cute. Who's the they that are so cute? Is it the cat? No, it's the kittens, the five kittens. The kittens are so cute. They, the kittens. Oops, do you see what I did there? Look at my instructions. From the pronoun to the noun. I just double checked, so guess what I need to do? I My arrow needs to go this way. Wait, the pronoun. Oh, no, that's right. Pronoun to the noun. That's it. Pronoun to the noun they describe. They is the pronoun. Kittens is the noun. Okay, on Saturday... Leo will help dad fix the fence. Can I confess to you something, boys and girls? If I was in class right now, I would pick lots of teacher helpers and I would, I would sit in my chair and I would let you write on the board right now because my brain is so tired <laughs> that I would say, okay, teacher time. Um, and I would just look at my book and see if you did it right on the fence. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. See, I just said fence. I'm looking at the page and I'm just saying random words. Um, Man, I hope I don't mess this page up for you. I need a teacher right now to come be my teacher. Um, okay, but you can't jump through the computer, so we're going to do our best. Here I go. Number three. Mom. Ah! Oh, my goodness, boys and girls. Number two. On Saturday, Leo will help dad fix the fence. Several boards on it are broken. Okay, number two. On Saturday... Leo will help dad fix the fence. Several boards on it are broken. What is the pronoun? I see it. Literally it. There's it. So several boards on it. Now we're going to think, what is the noun that that's talking about? Several boards on it are broken. What's the it? What's broken? Um, what has boards that has boards broken on it? Oh, yeah, it's a fence. Please don't say it's dad. Dad doesn't have, he's not doesn't have boards broken on him. Leo doesn't have boards broken on him. Saturday doesn't have boards broken on him. It's the fence. Do you see that? Okay, number three. Mom made a turkey sandwich for Frank's lunch, and he thanked her for it. Oh, man. If you didn't catch it there, there's three pronouns. I mean, oh, I mean her, he, she, they. I'm messing up my song. Um, I have to look back at the page. If you can sing it from your head right now, please do. Um, so we have he, her, and it, boys and girls. We have he, her, and it. Do you see all those? Now we have to draw an arrow for each one of those. Now let's look back. He thanked her for it. So who is the he thanking the her for it? Hmm. Let's look back at the first part of the sentence. Mom made a turkey sandwich for Frank's lunch. Ooh. Well, who's the he? It's Frank, right? I know this is Frank's, but it's Frank. So Frank is the one we're talking about. He thanked mom. So he thanked her. And who's the her he thanked? His mother. The her is his mother. So he thanked mom for it. What did he thank her for? The sandwich. Yeah. So you might know that in your head, but sometimes when you're actually drawing it out, you just, it's hard to see. But there it is. If I said mom made a turkey sandwich for Frank's lunch, he thanked her for it. Could you picture in my mind if I said he thanked her for it? Yeah, he is thanking his mom for the sandwich. Yeah. 
Okay, my family is sure that we will enjoy this camping trip. Ooh, I only see one. Maybe we can spot it together. Yep, there it is, we. My family is sure that we will enjoy this camping trip. What is the we? Is the we the camping trip? Is the we uh, my? No, it's just, it's family. We is the family. Who's going to enjoy it? The family's going to enjoy it. We will. Here we go. Mark the sen the circle next to the correct pronoun. Pronoun. So let's read them both. Do you remember some pronouns could be in the predicate and some can be in the subject and some could be both in the subject and the predicate? So let's listen and see which one sounds right. Juan and I are both taking trumpet lessons this year. Juan and me are both taking trumpet lessons this year. Ooh, Juan and me or Juan and I. Now, if you remember the rule, I is in the subject and me is in the predicate. So if I remember that, I know that it's I. Okay, and here's how I remember this too. If you take out the other person, sometimes you hear it a little bit better. I, so you would say I am, I am taking both trumpet lessons. Or I am taking trumpet lessons next year. Or would you say me is taking trumpet lessons next year? Nope, me goes in the sub predicate and I is in the subject. So if you remember to take out the other person, sometimes you can hear it. Would you say I'm taking trumpet lessons or me is taking trumpet lessons? Um, it is I. Okay, let's look at number two. Mrs. Winslow gave we strawberries from her garden. Mrs. Winslow gave us strawberries from her garden. So I, if I remember the rule, if I were diagramming the sentence... We is in this can be used in the subject and us is in the predicate. Okay, so this pronoun's in the predicate. So which one makes sense? Mrs. Winslow gave sub gave we strawberries or Mrs. Winslow gave us strawberries. She gave them to us. Now, if we gave them to her and we move that to the subject, it would be we. But we does not go in the predicate. We stays in the subject. So we know that it's us. Okay, number three, pick up the apples and set they on the counter. Or there's pick up the apples and set them on the counter. Ooh, they are on the counter. That would go in the beginning, but if I say set them on the counter or set they on the counter, it is them. Set them on the counter. And that's one of those probably boys and girls that you would just say it and they sounds funny. And so you would know that that's not it. They, they are on the counter. That works because that's in the subject. But in the predicate, you don't say they. Okay, here we go. Moving on down to the second half. Finally gonna finish page 188. Okay, number one in think C, underline the verbs or verb phrases twice in each sentence. Circle the adverbs, adverbs describe the verb, remember verb is an action word, and draw a small arrow from each adverb to the verb it describes. Okay, so we're looking for verbs and a verb is an action word. And the adverb describes the action. Okay? Let's look at the first one. Those green plants, those green bean plants are growing quickly. Are growing quickly. Ooh, I think growing, but ooh, I see something. Are growing. It's a verb phrase. Are is a helping verb. Don't forget that one. Are growing. Have grown. Will grow are growing. It is a verb phrase. How are they growing, boys and girls? Those green bean plants. Green is not an adverb because that's describing the verb. I mean, sorry, that's describing the plants. Um, the green bean plants. Nope. It's how are they growing? They are growing quickly. How are they growing? Quickly from the adverb to the verb it describes. There we go. Noah's family goes to the library weekly. 
What is Noah's family doing? The family goes to the library weekly. What word in there tells how often something grows? How, I'm sorry, how often the family goes. How often do they go? Weekly. Remember it tells you how often they go weekly. Sometimes Kyle reads three books in a week. Sometimes Kyle reads three books in a week. What does Kyle do? Kyle reads. There's his action. And how often does Kyle read? Sometimes. Sometimes he reads three books in a week. How often does he read three books in a week? Sometimes. That's actually a lot of reading. Our dog never barks at me. What is a dog? What's the action of the dog? What's the action there? What's the verb? Barks. How often? Never. Never barks. Okay. Dad will finish this job easily. Dad will... Oh, I see will. Will what? Will finish. Two words there. It's a verb phrase. Will's the helping verb. Dad will finish this job easily. How will he finish it? How will he finish this job? This job is not it. How will he finish the job? He will finish easily. This is all review, boys and girls. But sometimes, since we haven't done it a little bit, it might not come back so easily. Okay, <laughs> this has lots and lots and lots of instruction. So let's see all the things that we need to do. Draw a line to divide the subject and the predicate. Underline the verb twice. Verb twice. Subject once. Circle the adjectives. And draw a line from the adjective to the noun it describes. Okay. Then, ooh, here's our reminder. Remember, there may be more than one adjective that describes a noun. That's a good reminder for you. Then it says circle the adverbs and draw an arrow from the adverb to the verb it describes. Okay, that's a lot of instruction. Let's see if we can follow all the steps. And these sentences are tiny, so they're going to be very full of um, little marks that we make. Okay, so first one, subject and predicate. A small boy ran quickly. Who's doing what? A small boy. What did he do? Ran quickly. So there's a line between the subject and the predicate. The verb. Verb twice, subject once. We've done this many times. What did what did he do? Ran. That was our verb. And our subject is the boy. Okay. So now that we have the, this one, the boy is the what? The noun. And ran is the action. What is that? Verb. Okay. So now we're going to see what describes the boy and what describes ran. So let's start with the boy. Um, let's describe the boy. How? What's the boy? He's small. And he's a boy, right? Not the boy, not that boy. Um, a boy, a small boy. So he is, he's a boy and he's small. Okay, now tell me how he ran. He ran quickly. So that is our, what word is that, boys and girls? That's an adverb because it describes the verb, the action word. He ran quickly. So that's what your sentence should look like. Okay, last one. I'll give you a hint. Every one of these words will either have a circle or a line or an underline on it. There's only four words and everyone's going to be marked up. So let's start with the basics. Subject, predicate. Myra's friend squealed excitedly. Who's the subject? Myra's friend. What did she do? Squealed excitedly. So we have the action. Squealed. Who squealed? The friend. Okay, which friend? Tell me which friend. Myra's. That describes the noun. So it's an adjective. Okay, and the... How did they squeal? Squeal, remember, is the verb. It's the action word. How did they squeal? How did this friend squeal? Excitedly. Excitedly squealed. Woohoo! Okay, we are done with page 188. If you are still going, have a good time. If not, I will see you later. Welcome back, boys and girls. We are on page 189. I am so proud of you 
for keeping this up. Hopefully you remember all of this uh, because this one is actually a pretty easy fast page. Hooray! Uh, there's not too many marking ups. Um, we have some diagramming our sentences, uh, but they're pretty easy because the diagrams actually help, help us remember not to miss anything. Okay, so the first part, circle each conjunction. Can you read this? Can you listen to the song again? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses and but and or. That is it. Those are the only choices you have. You're just looking for and, but, and or in your sentences. Uh, they hook up words and phrases and clauses. So what is the conjunction in number one? We're going to circle it. Circle the conjunction. Number one, we had fish and chips for dinner last night. There it is. I see it. Do you see it? And how about number two? Jesus loves and cares for you. There it is. And I can't wait for summer but I will miss my friends. Guess what? We're already saying that right now. I can't wait for summer, but I will miss my friends. Right now it's, I will miss my friends and I still can't wait till summer. Um, but this one is, I can't wait for summer, but there's our conjunction, but. And number four, we can't decide whether to go to the beach or go to the park. No, just because it's a little word doesn't make it a conjunction. Two is not a conjunction. Don't write that. Uh, we're looking for and, but, and, or. So what do you see? I We can't wait, decide whether to go to the beach or go to the park. I found it. Hopefully you did too. Nice work. Okay. Here's my favorite. I really do love sentence diagramming. I'm such a silly person like that. Um, I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> okay. Mark each sentence. It's almost like a puzzle to me because if they have all the lines right there, um, and then in college, they don't give you the lines. You have to just write all the diagrams yourself. But thankfully, in third grade, they give you all the lines. So it helps you not miss the answers and get them all right. Okay, mark each sentence. Diagram the subject, verb, adjective, adverbs, conjunction. So we're looking for subject. We're looking for the verb. We're looking for adjectives and adverbs and conjunctions. So let's diagram it first. Micah and Matt played baseball. So we have Micah and Matt that's our subject, played baseball. So there's my line. And let's look at who's, let's look at the action first. So played, and who played? Matt. Oh, boys and girls, this is why I love, 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 love these sentences diagram like this. Because if I just wrote Matt, I would have missed something. And I said, why is this line here? Why is this line here? Oh, yeah, that's why, because there's also Micah. It actually helps me not get these wrong. And when you are doing this, boys and girls, is it okay, sorry, is it okay if Matt's on the top lane and Micah's on the second lane? Yeah, that's fine. Um, see how I just did that backwards? Now, I could have done Micah on the top lane and Matt on the second lane, and that would be okay. So Micah and Matt played base basketball. So what did they do? Here's our verb right here. They played what am I missing that goes on this little line? What's our conjunction that joins Micah and Matt together? I, I can't even join it without saying the word. Micah and Matt. And, and, there's our conjunction. Don't forget that. It should be on your line. That's why I love the sentence diagramming because I probably would have missed it. Uh, conjunctions, there you go. Here we go, number two. A beautiful full moon was reflected in the lake. There it is. Oh. Um, the beautiful mo full moon was reflected in the lake. So let's look at our sentence. The beautiful full moon was reflected in the lake. There it is. There's the subject. The beautiful full moon, what did it do? It was reflected in the lake. So now working backwards. What did the moon do so here's the moon that's our subject the moon's doing the action there was reflected in the lake was reflected that is a verb phrase the reflection is the action you could say is reflecting was reflected has reflected remember don't forget the was part because that's the helping verb so was reflected and then i'm gonna actually fill this in first was reflected. And I'm going to look. There's one, two, three lines. It helps me. 
because now I know there's three adjectives that I'm looking for to describe the moon. So what was the moon? Let's put look back at our sentence. Well, well the moon was full. Okay. The moon was beautiful. That's awesome. And this is the one I had always forget. A, not the, not that. A, beautiful, full moon. Okay, so let's write them on our line. A, beautiful, whoops, full moon. Awesome. This should be familiar. You should know this by now. I'm going to pick a color I don't often use. I'm just going to pick orange just because I feel like it. Uh, a striped chipmunk. Look at all these lines, boys and girls. They're going to help us not forget anything. A small striped chipmunk scampered quickly across the path. Whew, there's a lot in there. So let's break it down to the very beginning. Where's the who and the doing? Where's the subject and the verb? A striped chipmunk scampered. Well, scampered is like a little bitty run. Oops, sorry. I tried to run with my fingers across the screen and it made it move. Probably wasn't a good idea. So a little run. Like picture, like I'm trying to make the noise but not touch the screen. It's like scampering, that little little run. A uh, little light-footed kind of fast run, scamper. A little chipmunk scampered quickly across the path. So who's the, making the action in that sentence? The chipmunk. What is the chipmunk doing? Scampered. Okay, the chipmunk scampered. That's our basics. If you want to write it down on our... On your line first, in that order you can. Chip, monk, and what did the chipmunk do? The chipmunk scampered. Okay, so now let's look at how many lines. One, two, three. One, so there's one, two, three. We're looking for three adjectives to describe the chipmunk. Let's see if we could find them. Okay, well, I see one. It's striped. It's a striped chipmunk. It's a small chipmunk. And it's a chipmunk. And this is one of those things, boys and girls, if you are writing a story about a chipmunk, tell me about the chipmunk so I could picture it better in my mind. These adjectives and these adverbs, boys and girls, make your writing more interesting. Tell me what this noun looks like that you're talking about. Tell me how you're doing this action or the, the character in the story is doing it. Use rich descriptions. And part of that is using adjectives and adverbs to describe things. So we have a small a small uh, striped chipmunk. Okay, so let's look at our, let's look for our adverb to describe scampered. So how often, how did it, oh, how did they do it? Um, quickly, there it is. Scampered quickly. How did it scamper? It scampered quickly. Excellent, and we are done. 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 Hooray. We are done with this page. Yippee. Goodbye, page 189. I will see you later. Hey, boys and girls, guess what? I have good news. We are on page 190. If you pause, look in your book. You are not going to believe this. Get ready to jump up and down. We only have 191 pages in our whole book, in our whole entire book. Like, that's it. This is the very last page of instruction I am going to give you in language arts in third grade. What? It's true. Stop what you're doing right now. Jump up and down and like do a, like a fun party dance. Like, woohoo! page 190. We're done after this. You only have one page after that. And if you flip in your book, it's all, you can see it right now. It's a coloring page. And I will, can I send you the key? You know what? It doesn't even give me any answers in my key. Um, <laughs> um, I think I actually made one for myself last year and I lost it um, because it didn't actually give me a key. Um, so you'll have one last page to do next week, but it's coloring and it's a review of nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, and you'll take a picture and send it to me. But this is our last page of instruction and I'm celebrating because you know what this means? This is my very last language arts video I have to make. Woo woo! Hooray! Party in the closet. Cause that's where I am right now. Okay. Um, so with that said, let's get going. Number each group of words in alphabetical order. Okay, I love these. I think none of them have ties on. Oh, some of them have a tie on the first letter. So the first thing we do, I'm going to use a highlighter instead. 
Remember, the first thing we do is look at the first letter. If there's a tie, then we break the tie. But we look at the first letter first. Um, are there any of the same letters? Good news. There's not. So now we can go straight into alphabetizing. And we can sing the alphabet. Or if you wanted to, you could write A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z on your paper. You could do that. And then you could look at the alphabet and see what comes before what. But I'm just going to go through. I just do this. When I alphabetize, boys and girls, I just do the alphabet really quick in my head. A, B. I go A. I look for an A. There's no A. I look for a B. Oh, there's B. So this is B. Biking. A, B, C. Oh, there's a C. Camping. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, there's H, hiking, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, swimming, S, swimming, T, U, V, W, X, wait, did I miss one? Oh, I did. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's start back at H, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, there it is, R, R, S, T, U, Q, R, S, there it is. T U V W X Y Z. Okay, so R comes before S. Do you see it right here? R comes right before S. I was just singing so fast, I just went right past it. Forgot to write the four. Okay, uh, number two. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different because if you notice, watch this, there is a tie on one of these. Now, you wait for the tie until later, only when you get to that letter. So, you still start with the first letter first and then you work on the tiebreakers. Okay, so let's start back at the beginning. A, B, C, I see C, campfire, D, E, F, G, H, hot dog, I, J, K, L, M, mosquito, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Okay, now we're at the S's. Now we look at the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. So what comes first, S, U, or S, A? Well, I can look at that really easily and tell you A is the first letter of the alphabet. I don't even have to sing. So I know that sand is going to come before sunscreen. Hooray! And we're done with that section. Look, she's so happy too. Yay! Hooray! Okay. Um, that must be Sophia on her hike. This is probably what Sophia looks like. Looks like on her her hikes. <laughs> okay. Um, number. Well, think B. Draw the proofreader's marks in each box. So if you are marking up someone's paper, maybe your friend said, please, can you double check my work? Um, and they forgot a word. What would that look like if they forgot a word and you wanted to put a little thing in there? Or maybe they forgot a period and you want to insert that. Remember, it looks like a little mountain. Okay, what if someone needs a capital letter? What would you do? Maybe at the beginning of their sentence, they forgot one. You put the little three lines. What about lowercase? I don't remember the symbol for that, Mrs. Cornthal. It's because there isn't a symbol. It's just L, C, lowercase. What about delete? This one's the fun one because it's like a little piggy tail. And spelling mistake? Uh, it's not SM. It's just SP for spelling. That's it. That's just a quick review. Okay, now it says use proofreader's marks to make the corrections in punctuation and capitalization. So now we're going to use these things up here to the proofreader's marks to mark the corrections for these sentences right here. Okay, so let's do this slowly. Boys and girls, warning, 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 warning. You are so bright um, and you have worked so hard. Our language arts test on Google Classroom is one of the trickiest ones there is. I think I might actually um, uh, put a print up, like I'm gonna scan the actual um, page and have your parent print it if you want to so you can mark up some of the answers. I don't know. Um, or you might have to just write it on a separate piece of paper because sometimes if I say on the quiz, it'll say, how many capital letters are in the sentence? And when you mark them, you see them, but sometimes if you're just going through and counting them, you might miss one. So be super careful. Okay, so let's do this together. Um, mobile, or I might even say like, how many commas are in the sentence or how many mistakes are in the sentence? Um, and you might say, oh, there's five. It helps you. I will tell you, even as your teacher who knows this, if I didn't write it out, I'd probably miss something. So let's look at this and write it out. Uh, Mobile, Alabama is where my grandparents live. Okay, I see right away. Mobile, let's just go in order of the sentence. Mobile, 
there's two reasons that's capital. One, because it's the beginning of sentence. And because Mobile, if you didn't know, is the city in Alabama. And there's a comma between city and state. Oh, I might have missed that one, Mrs. Cornthal. And usually if there is like an interesting word that you don't know that is um, in front of a state, it's probably the city. So in Alabama is the state and the comma goes after the city and after the state. So we need another comma is where my grandparents live. What does this every sentence need at the end? Punctuation. Okay, number two. Joseph, Ruth, and Jana are going to ride the train with their parents. Now, there could be a boy whose first name is Joseph and middle name is Ruth. That would be weird. Um, I don't see many moms naming their boy Joseph Ruth. So it's probably what? A list. There's probably three kids. There's probably Joseph, Ruth, and Jana. So that's a list. So let's look at what we need in this list. First of all, Joseph needs to be capitalized. Uh, Ruth needs to be capitalized. And Jana, because they're all names. Now, if we know that that's a list, boys and girls, what do we need? Comma before the and and between everything else in the list. So we need two commas. Joseph, comma, Ruth, comma, and Jana are going to ride the train with their parents. What does every sentence need at the end? A period. Excellent. Okay, that's it. Um, number three. Mrs. Peters said, the summer reading contest will begin next week. Ooh, that looks like a direct quote. So I am probably going to have some quotes in there. Um, let's see. I'm going to switch colors so you can see the change here. Okay, Mrs. Peters. Ooh, capital for Mrs. Also because it's the beginning of the sentence. And that's an abbreviation. So what does it need? A period. Peters, that's her. That's a proper noun. That's her last name. Mrs. Peters said... This is a direct quote. So what does a direct quote need? Quotation marks. Okay, let's see where that ends. The summer reading contest will begin next week. Now, the quote goes all the way at the end. Now, before I write anything, there's two things that are going to go in here. One is the end punctuation and one is the quotation mark. Remember, the end punctuation gets tucked in to your quotes. It stays nice, stays nice and cozy on the inside. And then the quotations go on the outside. Make sure you got those in the right order. Okay, two more for this section. Have you signed up for the swimming lessons, William? Are these swimming lessons, William? Is that what the name of the lessons are? No, it sounds like we're talking to a boy named William in that in this sentence, doesn't it? Um, okay, so that's we'll save that for later. But let's see. Have you signed up for the swimming lessons, William? Well, I know the capital at the beginning, always, always. Have you signed up for swimming lessons, comma, William, because I'm going to stop and talk to William. And he is a proper noun, right? You want to know a fun fact, boys and girls? In my teacher book last year, I caught, they forgot to under, they forgot to capitalize William and didn't even note it in my teacher book. And so I actually had to write it in my teacher book because they skipped it. Um, so William is capitalized because it's his name. It's a proper noun. And what kind of end punctuation is this sentence? Have you signed up for swimming lessons, comma, William? Have you picked up your class items, comma, Tegan? I'm asking a question, right? So that needs a question mark. Uh, Grandpa's glasses are sitting on his Bible. Okay, now it could be more than one grandpa, but I know that that's not the case because his Bible is singular. So look at that. Don't underline it, but just look at this. His Bible, I know it's just one grandpa. So if you're wondering if it's grandpa's glasses, could there be like five grandpas with glasses sitting on the table? Yes, but it doesn't say they're sitting on their Bibles. It's his Bible. So we know it's just one grandpa. Okay, so let's look at that again. Grandpa's glasses are sitting on his Bible. So grandpa's only because it's the beginning of a sentence and it, they belong to grandpa. So what does it need? What is that? Nope. I'm going to get rid of whatever that was. Grandpa's glasses. It needs a apostrophe because it's possessive. It's grandpa's glasses are sitting on his Bible. Bible is the name of the most special book ever printed. So titles of books get a capital 
and the ev- it is a regular declarative, so it needs a period at the end. Woo, good job. Okay, finish strong. And then we'll say goodbye to our book. Goodbye, book. Goodbye. The tree is saying goodbye. <laughs> this is the, the tree is talking. Um, Abigail joined me in the closet. Okay. Um, complete each sentence by writing the adjective or adverb. Oh, Abigail, this is fun. Okay, boys and girls, you get to, this is when I would call on you in the classroom. Um, I'm going to go back to purple because Abigail is my purple lover. Um, Abigail, I'm going to let you pick one of these. So I'm going to read this. Yeah. Um, It's like a Mad Lib kind of. But those of you crazies, like Matthew, I know that you would pick like the silliest. And Josh would pick some of the silliest adverbs and adjectives. I still want it to make somewhat of sense. So, um, Abigail, you can be silly, uh, but no potty talk. And Mm -hmm. um, don't be like too crazy. Yeah. Okay, so Abigail's here to help. And you guys can read this and you can share it with your family if you want. Or go see if they can just get you a Mad Lib for fun. Now that you've learned all these things, you can do that. That's where I learned your free this time. stuff. Yeah, we love Mad Libs at our house. Okay, so it says complete each sentence by writing an adjective or adverb. And remember what an adjective does? It describes a what? A noun. And an adverb describes a verb. Okay. So let's think about this. On the something day of summer vacation, Henry ate breakfast something. How did he eat breakfast? Outside, he ran in the something grass and smelled the something air. So describe the air. He heard his friend calling. How did he, how did they call? So adverb. Henry knew it would be a something summer. So describes, describes summer. Okay. Um, Abigail, an adjective on the something day of summer vacation. Let's see. On the hottest day of summer vacation. Ooh, hottest. That's fun. Could you have said first? Would that have worked? Yes. Yeah. Last. Um, yeah, that would have worked too. Could have said when. Um, okay. So Abigail said hottest. Maybe it shouldn't be last because I knew it would be a great summer. That's true. That would probably be, like, past tense. You're right. Yeah. It could be the first. Okay, Henry ate breakfast. How did he eat breakfast? Quickly. Quickly. That's a good one, Abigail. Quickly. You came in just the perfect time. Okay, outside he ran in the... Describe grass. Hmm. <laughs> Dry. Ooh. You know what? I would have said soft. But if it actually is getting to be summer and it's the hottest day of summer, it probably would be dry grass at, like kind of itches your feet okay dry grass and smelled the what air the steamy air steamy are you in hawaii yes steamy air all right he heard his friend calling what describe how his friend is calling um excitedly Ooh. excitedly Henry knew it would be a what summer? Fantastic summer. Fantastic. Okay, boys and girls, with that, we are done with our lessons. This was my very last language arts video. Woo woo, Abigail. Really? Yeah, the next page is just a coloring page. So good job. I am so proud of you. And more than anything, use all these things. Boys and girls, use everything that you learn and do. To love God and what? Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. So when you describe them and talk to them, use kind words. Um, Use it to serve others. When you write stories, write a story for someone that you know and love. Um, And send a letter to grandma or grandpa. Sorry, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Um, Send a message to somebody using all the things that you've learned. Um, Write, make up a... Um, fun Mad Lib for your friend and then we actually did that. We made up Mad Libs and we sent them to the grandma and grandpa and had them fill in all the adjectives and adverbs and nouns and um, because we left the blanks and then we had to mail it back. So you think outside the box. You could actually use language arts to love your neighbor. Um, And in all things that we do um, don't forget to bring glory to God. Okay, I love you. Go celebrate. Go have a treat. Um, Go tell your parents. Go give everyone around you a high five. All right, sign.